Welcome to the next new topic. It is the interested one. That is energy band theory of solids. The energy band theory of solid is a theoretical framework that describes the behavior of electrons in solids. It explains how the energy levels of electrons in a solid are grouped into bands and how these bands determine the electrical and optical properties of solids. So before that, uh, we need to know about the concepts of energy band. What do you mean by energy band? The energy bands are ranges of energy where electrons can exist in a solid. The H band is characterized by a specific energy range and a specific set of quantum numbers. Here, uh, in this screen, we have given an atom which have an atomic number 33. So when we split up uh, this 33 as a KLM and orbital, K contains 2, L contains 8, M contains 18 and uh, remaining 5 is that, that 5 will be there in N orbital. In, an, in this isolated atom, all the electrons are tightly bounded to the central positive nucleus and revolve around various orbits. That's such a K, L, M, N orbitals. The number of electrons in the outermost orbit are called as a valence electron. These electrons can be easily detached from the nucleus, which are called as a free electron. In the valence band, which contains the valence electrons, these electrons are involved in the formation of chemical bonds between atoms. These detached electrons from the outermost orbits are called as a free electron. The innermost orbit electrons are tightly bounded to the positive nucleus and hence they are termed as a bound electrons. So now coming to the energy level, each orbit of an atom has fixed amount of energy associated with it. The electrons moving in a particular orbit possess the energy of that atom. The larger the orbit, the greater is its energy. So the outermost orbit electron possess more energy than the inner orbital electrons. That is, in this uh, atom here, the aluminum is the example which have 13 atomic number. In K shell, it, have, it contains 2. In M, L shell, it contains 8. The remaining 3 will be revolving around in M orbital. So when comparing to the K, L, M, M have more energy than K because the outermost orbital contains more energy. Will it even be the energy level of the K shell and E2 be the energy level of the L cell and E3 be the energy level of the M cell? The electrons can revolve only in a certain permitted orbit. So each and every orbit have radius. In the inner orbit have a radius R1, the next one R2, next one R3, and so on. So, are uh, not in an orbitary orbit. These electrons are not allowed in between the radi R1 and R2 or in between the radi R2 and R3, etc. There won't be any electronic energy level in between these radi. So, uh, the, uh, it is called as a forbidden radi. This band is called as a forbidden band. In this figure, the uh, light green color uh, band is called as a forbidden band and the next level are in between R2 and R3. It was uh, colored as a purple color. The pur in this purple color phase, the electron will not see because the electrons will, will be there in only permitted or allowed energy bands. So this was clearly explained in Pauli's exclusive principle. These unallowed energy levels are called as a forbidden energy level. It is in between the permitted orbitals. Now coming to the energy band. According to this explanation, we can uh, uh, split this energy band as a three types. One is a valence band, conduction band, and forbidden band. It is considered two identical atoms of diameter D. Separated at a distance, uh, separated at a distance r. This in the from the center to from the center, it was r. This is radius is greater than the um, distance of identical diameter of the identical atom. So the electronic energy level of an atom E11 means this is the first atom. E 
two one means it is the energy level two of uh, first atom that is second energy level is L shift first energy level is K shift. So this do not affect the energy electronic energy levels of the other atom that is E one two means second atom E one means K shift E two means L shift. If this two atom clubbing together that is it forms a molecule what happens? Now we bring the atoms closer together. Some force of attraction occurs between them. And according to quantum mechanics, their wave function is not overlapping. Therefore, when two atoms are brought closer, it does not remain as two independent atoms. It forms a single two atom system with two different energy levels. The thing better, it becomes the molecule to form energy band like uh, the two different in identical atom energy levels will be. Combined together, that is, its first one uh, K shell and second one K cell will merging together and forms as a E11 and E22 here. E11 and E22 K shell and L cell, L cell also clubbing together. So, these are the explanation of origin of energy bonds. Now, we coming to the point the importance of energy band. So it explains the electrical conductivity. The energy band theory explains why some solids are good conductors of electricity while others are not. And also it explains the optical properties of solids such as absorption and reflection of light. Then it is used in semiconductor technology. That is the energy band theory is crucial in the development of semiconductor devices such as transistor and solar cells. The limitation also we have to uh, consider uh, it uh, energy band theory assumes the perfect crystal lattice which is not always the case of real world solid not all the solids are perfect crystal so this was not clearly explained with energy band theory then it it, it ignores the electron electron interaction and also it it uh, doesn't explain the complexity of real solids it simplifies the complexity of real solids, which ha can have defect impurities and other complexities. So this was not explained with energy band theory, but some number of applications are there. Number of development in technology will be there only by the development of energy band theory. So we can stop up to this. We can meet in the next video, origin of energy bands. Thank you.